There's a fine line between right and wrong. And somewhere in the shadows, they send us in to find them. What is up and welcome back. It's Scovos bringing you another Call of Duty Modern Warfare video today. And in today's video, we're going to be going over my favorite search and destroy setup for the AK-47 assault rifle. So the very first thing we're going to touch base on is what field upgrade to use. And there's a lot of choices here, but I feel like the first and most obvious choice and really the only one you should be using in search and destroy is going to be dead silence. And the reason behind this is because it makes you extremely quiet. It has a recharge rate of fast and not a lot of people seem to realize this, but gun, melee, and throwing knife kills also refresh their duration, allowing you to be in dead silence for longer periods of time. Now, when do you use dead silence? Dead silence is perfect to pop right before you get in a battle, right before sneaking behind enemy lines, before planting or defusing the bomb, especially if you're rush planting or ninja defusing. It is a perfect tool for just about any sticky situation. It's also great for escaping those sticky situations. If most of your teammates are down and not a lot of the enemy teammates have died, then you can pop this, escape, and then re-engage when you feel ready. And the next thing we're going to go over is the killstreak selections. So my personal favorite is going to be the 4 killstreak UAV, 5 killstreak cruise missile, and 8 killstreak VTOL jet. Now some other choices here is going to be personal radar, but the reason I'm pointing this one out specifically is because not a lot of people realize this either, but using personal radar does give away your position. So the personal radar will fly around your approximate location, and if you're behind enemy lines, especially on search and destroy, or if you're last alive and you use this, the entire team, if they're paying attention, or if they're smart enough, will realize where you are in relativity to the radar. So be careful if you're using this and it's also relatively easy to shoot down as you can just use a normal gun and a rocket launcher or something along those lines is not necessary. Now for UAV, a lot of people do use Ghost, but you would also be surprised how many people don't run Ghost in Search and Destroy. And for me, getting a 4 kill streak is not that difficult. I'm very good at Search and Destroy, and I don't talk highly of myself at many things, but Search and Destroy is something that I'm very confident in. That's why I run the 4, 5, and 8 kill streaks. So maybe if you're not comfortable with getting 8 kills, throwing that 3 kill streak personal radar is definitely a choice. Or throwing on a 7 kill streak. But personally, I don't really like any of these 7 kill streaks as I don't find them that useful. But moving on into the cruise missile. Cruise missile is definitely easily 100% my favorite kill streak out of any of these just because while using the cruise missile you can also call out every location of every enemy that you see. Take your time while deploying the cruise missile, call out those enemies to your teammates, and then you can easily pick one off. This is almost a guaranteed kill every single time you use it. So as it's coming down, you can target that sniper head glitching the back, the camper in the building if you can manage to get in a doorway or a window if they've just been there every single round, or it can come in clutch by killing somebody trying to defuse or plant the bomb if you're outnumbered. So if you have a cruise missile up and you're the last alive and the bomb is down, you can run away, pop that cruise missile, and kill any enemies trying to defuse, and that buys you some time, enough time, to hopefully hold off the timer and win that round. Other good choices, obviously, are going to be Precision Airstrike and Cluster Strike. You can drop these on the bomb you just planted, a bomb that they're trying to defuse, or a bomb that the enemy team is rushing. So this definitely holds off the bomb site for quite a good period of time, but does not give you the ability to call out every single enemy location. And if you're only targeting one person, it is very hit or miss whether you're actually going to get that kill or not. As for the VTOL jet, this is probably the strongest kill streak within reason on Search and Destroy. Obviously, any of the ones above this are very powerful, but the VTOL jet is extremely loud, and that's probably the biggest perk of it. So the VTOL flying around forces people indoors and then causes an atrocious amount of noise, and it's just ridiculous how loud this is. If you haven't played with this on Search and Destroy, give it a shot and pay attention to how you cannot hear anything at all. So if you're using this, you can pop your dead silence and pretty much do whatever you want because nobody's going to expect or know where you're coming from for that matter.
So now moving into loadout specifically, now obviously my favorite AK-47 class setup is going to have the AK-47, but for the secondary across the board is going to be a combat knife, and the reason for using the combat knife is because you can pull it out off spawn and double sprint with it getting the fastest movement speed possible. So I definitely use the combat knife anytime I go to rush plant or anytime I try to push up and grab a position I like to hold, waiting for the attackers or defenders to cross my line of sight. Another choice I use across the board is going to be the lethal Simtex grenade, and the reason I choose the Simtex grenade over all of the other uh, lethals is because claymores I feel like they're cheap, C4 takes too long to use in my opinion, frag grenades can bounce around sporadically, and molotovs and thermites are too hit or miss whether you're actually going to get a kill or not. The throwing knife is very precise and I miss way too often with those and proximity mine also feels like a claymore and it's kind of cheap to use in search and destroy. If you use those, nothing against you, but I prefer the Simtex in just about every way, shape and form. The Simtex again does not bounce around sporadically, so you can throw this in a room, know that it's going to stay in the room. If you stick an enemy, it's a guaranteed kill for the most part. And then it's also good against riot shielders, and there's a lot of riot shielders running around in search and destroy, so you can definitely use this to your advantage. It's also great for spawn nading certain areas or throwing it at vehicles and cars in order to get the kills that you want. So now to move on into the attachments for the AK-47 specifically. So under Gunsmith, the first one up, we have our muzzle break. And again, on this AK-47, I'm going to be using Compensator. And I run Compensator on 95% of all of my weapons that I prefer to use, especially for Search and Destroy. And unless they add the red dots to the minimap, I probably will never change this. If they do that, then I would definitely consider switching over to one of the suppressors and trying out and figuring out which one I like the most. That way it can conceal my position since search and destroy you only have one life and it's going to be a slower paced typically gameplay so for the compensator it aggressively fights upward muzzle climb its pro is going to be recoil control and cons will be aim down sight speed and aiming stability now for aim down sight speed you're probably going to be aimed in most of the time before engaging in any fights so that's not a huge con and not going to affect this class very much aiming stability is the sway of the weapon so that's not very important either, so those cons are definitely worth the aggressive upward recoil control that the compensator provides, and with the AK-47 having a lot of recoil, it's definitely, definitely really beneficial. So for the optic, this one obviously is going to be more personal preference than anything, but I run the GI Mini Reflex. It's got a low bezel, it doesn't obscure almost any of your screen, it's very slim and not flashy or intricate or anything like that, it's just very simple and straightforward, and that's why I choose this one over the others. There's plenty of mini reflex sites that you can definitely choose from that don't really give you any advantages or disadvantages other than the way they look. So for the underbarrel, I run the Ranger foregrip, and the reason I run this one is because of the pro to recoil control. So that's the number one thing I'm going for with the AK-47 because the recoil on this is much more powerful and much more randomized than the M4. So it's harder to control, so getting that recoil control definitely helps a lot. This one also increases aiming stability, so it cancels out some of the other attachments that reduce aiming stability. But any of the foregrips here are pretty much interchangeable, but I would definitely recommend going with recoil control over anything else. Now the cons for this is going to be aim walking move speed and aim down sight speed. But again, with aim down sight speed, you're probably going to be zoomed in before you engage, so isn't a huge deal. And aim walking move speed, that one's going to be more preference or not, but basically if you get shot at, instead of trying just to walk away while aim down sights, just zoom out and then move. That way you're not affected by this con. For the rear grip, I choose rubberized grip tape over the others just because it also has recoil control at the con of aiming stability. Again, aiming stability is the sway of your weapon, which isn't that important. But the pro is recoil control, which is the most, the biggest downside to the AK-47. Another good choice here is the stipled grip tape for ADS speed and sprint to fire speed, but this is not a run and gun class, so those ones are going to be less handy than the recoil control that the rubberized grip tape gives you. Now, for the other attachments, I would say... Probably choosing between a perk or the stock is going to be the most beneficial. If you're going with a stock, I would either recommend the skeleton stock for this class to increase aim walking move speed and aim down sight speed to kind of cancel out some of the other attachments that reduce those, or the close quarter stock to increase aim down sight speed. The other ones like ultra right is just going to increase aim walking move speed, but skeleton stock does both. So this is probably 
would be my number one choice if I went with a stock instead of a perk, but personally, I like this perk quite a bit, especially on the AK, because its recoil is kind of, it's kind of a lot. So with the frangible disabling perk, it will briefly slow enemy movement speed and disable tactical sprint if you shoot their legs. So if you only clip one bullet on their legs, they can't run away, they're slowed down, and that gives you that split second it takes to readjust your aim if you miss a couple bullets to get your aim back on point before they can sprint away again. And that allows you to get that damage off and get that kill without them escaping, especially on Search and Destroy where one kill can really turn the tides of battle. And that will wrap up the video for today. I want to thank you for stopping by. Please click that subscribe button. It really does help me out quite a bit. And it'll help me help you by putting out more quality content. And if you did like the video, you can also click that thumbs up button. If you did not like the video, you're more than welcome to click the thumbs down as well. And as always, let me know what you think below in the comment section. I want to hear your thoughts and opinions on all of this. And if you want to know right when my videos go live, you're more than welcome to click the bell icon to get notified when they do right away. And just a heads up for all of my followers, subscribers, and my loyal viewers across all of my social media channels, I will be rolling out my YouTube membership very, very soon. So keep an eye out for that join button on my YouTube channel. This is going to include exclusive giveaways, extra entries for those giveaways, exclusive playtime for some of the tiers with me on any game that you want, and other various rewards. I'm also open to suggestions and ideas from all of you still sticking around this video long enough to hear me talk about this. As always, I hope you have a good evening, morning, night, afternoon, or whatever it is, wherever you are, but thank you for stopping by, and I hope to see you in my next videos.